Hi, my name is Dave, and today we're going to look at this very interesting uh, and rather bizarre, strange, Goto Kogaku uh, from the late 1940s. This is a 60mm F900. The most oddball thing about it, uh, first of all, the optics are superb, of course, as with all Gotos, but the most odd thing about it is this very strange, I believe this is technically called an inverted fork mount, but it's also convertible to an Althaz scope. Now watch me try to mount this OTA. There's a very strange, uh, unbelievably strange little problem with this. This nut right here has to slide right through there. I'll show you a close-up of it. Okay, here comes Fumble Fingers Dave. And you have to see how this OTA slides in there. Now notice that this thing, that almost squeezes right up against that. I think what I'm going to do is, I don't want to put this all the way on, but I'm going to put this one partly on there so I can lift this up and it's a little bit safer. This is tricky. You have to somehow squeeze this nut in between here. Holy m- oh, jeez. Oh. oh, the pleasures of vintage telescopes. Okay, so here we go. Now, oh, I got it. Hey. Ha uh, ha! Anyway, that's what you have to do to mount that thing. How's that for difficult? Okay, the telescope is now configured for Altaz use. I think I'll go ahead and put the terrestrial eyepiece in. This is a very strange Goto. I don't think anybody ever made anything quite like that except for Goto. Maybe. Maybe Nippon Kogaku. Anyway, uh, that's the image erecting eyepiece. And um, now I'm going to put on the slow motion uh, controls. This, this is a very interesting, I don't think I've ever seen one quite like this. This slips on. And it's got a little kind of a, a pressure system in there. It works pretty darn well. <coughs> this one, by the way, this is not an original. It's a Goto knob, but it's not original to the scope. And of course, uh, me and Goto, they're pretty much interchangeable. Anyway, that fits in there. Now this thing has an interesting sort of ball and socket kind of a deal. Uh, really interesting to keep it from getting too far afield. Anyway, you can see this thing will drop it only that far so it doesn't go too far away from you. Anyway, that's the way uh, that works now. Let me show you. This is interesting. It's got two separate knobs here that you could easily get control. Two locks that could easily get messed up. This is your altitude lock here. So you lock it down in altitude. Okay, up and down. Lock it down. Now you have slow motion and altitude. Here's your lock in azimuth. So you can swing it around with that loose. And you lock it down and you have slow motion and azimuth. Now let me just flip this around to show you how confusing this can be. Back here on the other side, here's another locking knob. What the heck is this locking knob for? Well, this locking knob locks the position of the counterweights. I'll show you in a minute when I attach them. That's all it does. This, and so you got sort of two separate locks on there just to add to the confusion just to make it more of an adventure to try and use this uh, especially under a dark night sky all right now let's configure it for um equatorial use first i'm going to change it put a star diagonal in here I think I'll use a 25 millimeter eyepiece here. Oh, I want to point out that these screws here are not original. This, these are not to this, don't belong with this scope. I First thing you need is, of course, not one, but two counterweights. And these screw on right here. Now let me show you once again, I just want to show you once again this locking mechanism. This locking mechanism doesn't lock it <clears throat> in altitude, which will be in a moment, declination. 
it changes the position of these things. So you can change the counterbalance. Strangely, you can't counterbalance, uh, you can't add more weight or change the length of that lever arm, but by the same token, at least you can sort of try to balance, <laughs> sort of try to balance it. <clears throat> very, very interesting. And you, I absolutely love how strange this thing is. And we're not done with strangeness. We've got plenty more to go. Okay, so now we're going to tilt this to the proper latitude. Inside here is a latitude adjustment screw. You can't see it from that view, but I'll, sh I'll show you a close-up of that. Underneath here is a locking nut. And you tilt it like so. And there's a. it's stopping here because of a, that bolt I mentioned. So it's stopping, and I've got it set, I don't know, something like maybe... 40 degrees, I don't know, approximately. Now I've got it set up. This is now an equatorial telescope. And I can uh, reconfigure the balance a little bit if I want to. <coughs> got to be the strangest equatorial telescope you've ever seen. I'll show you some close-ups of how all this stuff works here. There are so many knobs and dials and bolts and screws and odd configurations here, it's almost impossible to keep track of everything. All right, um, let's rename these now. This is now your declination slow motion. And of course, you can change it in declination. Let's, let's move it in declination. So you have something higher in declination, lower in declination. And you can see the counterweights are they're doing something useful here. I think we've got them set about right, but I can reconfigure them if I need to. So you lock it down. Whoops. Oh, you gotta go the other way. Lock it down. <laughs> lock it down in declination, and then you have your slow motion. Well, let's put it someplace more reasonable. Let's let's aim it. Uh, let's uh, let's aim it someplace like that. Let's suppose we're looking at a planet somewhere. Lock that. Is that the right thing? Yeah. Oh, no, wrong way. Oh, it's so easy to do that. I've done that about 15 times. Okay, so anyway, now I've got a lockdown. Now here's my uh, pseudo <laughs> declination. I'm not sure if it's really declination. Anyway, it's a declination. Here's my right ascension. I'll show you some close-ups of all this strange, bizarre stuff. Okay, let me give you a close-up of how some of these things work. This is a slip-on. That just slips on there, and there's a... Um, some sort of a spring-loaded ball bearing in there or something. Slips right on there. <laughs> you have to get it just right. This thing has that strange, odd, sort of a ball and socket kind of an arrangement like that. And uh, let me show you how this works. First of all, this, it's easy to get confused. That's just the... Uh, altitude locking mechanism locks it down like so and then if you want to reconfigure the counterweight to use this now you can reconfigure the counterweights like so and of course the counterweights just unscrew right here okay so now what's happening inside here I don't know if you can see it but there's a a bolt that's turning and there's I apologize for all the dust on this. Anyway, a um, bolt that's turning and it's moving this back and forth. That, of course, locks depending upon where you are. That gives you a certain amount of uh, either declination or altitude control for that. Okay, inside here, there's a uh, there's a large nut that tightens this thing down so you can adjust the latitude here this is a kind of a stop bolt and you can adjust it so you can set it theoretically for whatever latitude you might have so you can set that and then this thing comes down and just collapses right down to that of course you're going to want to tighten it up again 
So that's how that works. I hope you've enjoyed having a look at this Goto Kogaku Eros telescope from the late 1940s. Thank you very much for watching.